Okay, so my doctor ended up putting me on metformin, and at that time, they started me off at 2,000 milligrams, and I've pretty much my entire time that I've been on metformin, it has pretty much always been 2,000 milligrams. Um, I know I have seen folks over the years where they start off at 500, and then go up to 1,000, then go up to 15. Mine has always been 2,000, and that's from two different doctors, including an art. Well, yeah, two different doctors, including an RE. So... I ended up being on 2,000 milligrams of metformin, and the first month they put me on the metformin, they tried Clomid. And the very first month that I tried both, I ended up getting pregnant. And, you know, just fully amazed. I was like, wow, you know, it really does work. Um, this is going to be fine. You know, we'll be okay. Well, at about um, six weeks, they realized the baby didn't have a heartbeat. And they're like, well, that's still kind of early. We'll keep checking. Seven weeks, no heartbeat. Eight weeks, no heartbeat. Put it this way, between the time I found out I was pregnant, which I found out when I was three weeks and two days, I still have the paperwork, um, between that and nine weeks, there was still no heartbeat. They did about five different ultrasounds and could not find it. So they ended up doing a DNC at nine and a half weeks. Um, I was totally devastated. I think that was probably the hardest thing I think I ever had to deal with. Um, and that was back in 2003. So they said, well, you know, you can try again. We'll give, you know, you still have several more rounds of Clomid. All in all, I ended up doing 11 more rounds of Clomid after that first one. It never worked again. Never even ovulated, let alone get pregnant. Um, so we were kind of like, okay, well, it just doesn't work for me. I'm not really sure why. And we ended up pretty much going and just trying to figure out, well, okay, is there something else that we can do to make it work? And just nothing else would make it work. Um, we're not really sure why it wouldn't work. Sorry, I'm just locking the door um, so that kids don't come back through here. Um, but it, it just wouldn't. You know, I'm not really sure what was going on with that. But we ended up saying, okay, well, maybe we can try, you know, a natural approach. We'll try some different types of vitamins and some different types of, you know, supplements to see if that would make a difference. No, none of that made a difference. So they were like, we've already tried 11 rounds. If that's not going to work for you, there's probably not much else you can do other than injectables or maybe IUI or IVF. And at that time, I think I was under the impression, okay, well, if you can't get the eggs to come out with, you know, the over-the-counter meds, why am I going to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars for IUI and IVF if that's not going to work either? I'm like, you know, so I guess for me, I felt like if the lower end stuff wasn't going to work, the higher end stuff, I don't mind trying, but it's not a guarantee either. And, you know, IVF is roughly $10,000. So why am I going to spend that kind of money and you don't have a guarantee? So I kept saying, well, we'll just keep trying natural, put it off. Um, and, you know, maybe we wouldn't have any issues. So, and, and miraculously, one day it would work. You know, I'll lose some more weight. So, my first husband, which is where the first miscarriage came in, he ended up passing away um, in 2009. And, you know, that, that was hard to deal with. It, it really was because he did not have any children. And for me, it was hard enough dealing with infertility and feeling, you know, less complete of not being able to give him a child. But then the fact that he passed away and never got to experience that was, was really hard on me. So... You know, I gave it some time, and I was like, I, you know, there's nothing I can do. I, I tried. We did the Clomid. I, you know, I did everything I could. So I ended up getting remarried, and um, second husband was in the military at the time we first met. And, you know, it was one of those things where um, I knew that the military would pay for most of the medication. I knew that the military would pay for most of the treatment. Well, not the military, I'm sorry, but TRICARE would pay for most of it. But I knew they would not cover IUI or IVF. And my insurance, which is Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, does cover the majority of the medications but and some of the testing and treatment, but they will not cover the um, IVF or IUI either, the, the version that we have. So I was like, okay, you know, we can try again and allow, you know, what the insurance will cover and then we'll save up for the rest. Well, you know, he was like, well, why don't we try naturally? Maybe it wasn't just you. Maybe it was you and your first husband. And I was like, well, not that I know of, but okay, we'll try. Because second husband did have a son with his previous wife. So we started trying. Um, we tried for, let's say, we got together at the very end of 2009 after my first husband, you know, had already passed away. And we tried from then all the way until... Um, 2011, 
so about two years and um, did not try anything um, other than just being on metformin, had tried Vitex, uh, soy isoflavins, um, some of the other little natural stuff that you hear folks talk about on some of the community blogs that are online and some of the discussion forums about getting pregnant. We tried a lot of those and nothing seemed to work. I mean, I wasn't even having regular periods. It was pretty much, you know, one period every six months maybe if I was lucky um over the span like I said from 13 to now um and now I'm 34 total if you count every period I've ever had I've had under 22 periods I want to say it's somewhere between 19 and 22 I kind of lost track with some spotting somewhere in there too but literally 22 periods in about 20 21 years okay so there have been years that I've gone without a period they've put me on Provera Provera did not work um once or twice it did, other than that, it just didn't work. They'd put me on it for 10 days and say, here, take it. When you're done, your period will start. No, it, it just did not work for me. Um, so we decided that, okay, well, you know, we'll start trying again. But, um, you know, and see what type of fertility drugs we can try. Well, we found out that not only did I have PCOS, but I was actually full-blown diabetic. So the RE and the endo for my diabetes and my OB... All of them pretty much said the same thing. Before we start fertility treatments, we want to get the diabetes under control because if we don't, you're going to have more problems. So I was like, okay, um, we'll, we'll fix that. So they put me on, you know, again, 2,000 milligrams of metformin, um, and they started monitoring me every three months at Duke because um, I live in North Carolina, so... Um, Duke is one of the better facilities. So I have an RE here locally in town where I live and an OBGYN. And then I have um, the endo, endocrinologist that's at Duke that follows me. So, you know, I end up getting blood work and they kind of share back and forth the data. Um, and, you know, they, they work very well together, we'll put it that way. So we got the diabetes under control, which it really, to me, was never out of control. The day that they diagnosed me with diabetes, my A1C level was 7.0. Um, every time I've gone, they one time I've went, it's 6.5, a couple times 6.3, a couple times 6.7, but it's pretty much stayed steady at a 6.5 for the last couple of years now. And they were okay with that number. My blood sugar is never high. Well, not what most people consider high. The highest I've seen my blood sugar in the two, three years now that we've been diagnosed, um, was 182 and that was right after a heavy meal to include include dessert um usually it's in the 100 102 range 98 range which yes that's still technically diabetic however compared to some people i know where their blood sugar is like 400 after they eat yeah mine is never that high um they don't even have me check my blood sugar regularly it's they tell me check it um pretty much once every three or four days and that's how often I check it. Whereas like my mother who's diabetic, who's on insulin, she has to check hers three or four times a day. And I've met other people that have to check theirs several times a day. No, I'm, I'm checking it once every three days and they're okay with that because it's, it's never really high. So for a little while, um, I thought, okay, well, you know, now that diabetes is under control because they were pretty sure the insulin resistance issue is what was keeping me from ovulating, you know, we would, it would work. Mm, no, it, it didn't. Um, we still weren't having any success. Well, then my sister came to live with me um, and my husband and my kids for about a year. She came to live with us August 2nd and of last year, of 2011. And then she decided that, um, you know, she would stay at least a year and then kind of go from there. Like, okay, no problem. She moved in August 2nd. I got my next period August 27th. I had already been using the Clear Blue Easy Fertility Monitor and had only gotten highs and lows, had not gotten a peak. And I was on like maybe month three or four of using it when she moved in. The month she moved in, you know, like I said, it was August, and my period was August 27th. Then in September, on like cycle day, I think 21, I got a positive. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, it's the first time I had seen one. Sure enough, got pregnant um, right away. I found out about a week later that I was pregnant and kind of went from there. I was like, oh, wow, you know, we weren't on anything. We weren't using anything, uh, just the metformin, and that was it. So I don't know if her being in the house helped, you know, kind of balance stuff out. Because you hear people say, oh, if you have a house full of women, they usually in cycle in sync together. Well, you know, I have two daughters, and we're not in sync together, and we live in the same house, you know, type thing. But evidently my sister being there, something changed. So got pregnant, um, but at about 
four and a half weeks, well, about four weeks, four and a half weeks, we were like right away we knew something was wrong. Um, I kept having a lot of pain, had started spotting. All in all, ended up making about four ER trips, had four ultrasounds. Um, at first, you know, they couldn't see anything because it was so early. Then they went back and saw a sack, went back again, saw the baby, but not a heartbeat. Went back again, saw the heartbeat. And then that last time, so actually that five, four or five, I can't quite remember. The very last ultrasound, after they had already seen a heartbeat, then the sack had diminished, the baby had gotten shrunken smaller, and the heart had stopped. Um, they found out I had a cyst on one ovary, a small, very small, I think it was on like two millimeters. And then, um, they found out I had a fibroid. Um, on inside my uterus right above where the baby was implanted. They couldn't prove that that's why I miscarried, but they were very concerned because they thought it might have been pressing on the sac because it had grown to the point that it was pressing on the sac that they were having a hard time seeing the baby inside the sac because it was putting so much pressure. I, I guess it was blocking it on the ultrasound. So it, it was an issue. We'll, we'll put it that way. Um, and they ended up... Um, I was like, well, are you guys going to do another DNC? You know, this is miscarriage too. They did one the first time. Or, you know, are you going to let me miscarry naturally at home? Well, they chose to let me miscarry naturally at home. Um, I ended up, you know, trying very hard not to miss any time off of work. While I do have a decent job where I could have taken leave, I just chose not to. Um, I felt, you know, sitting at home is not going to change the fact that I'm losing the baby. And that was, um, I think my biggest issue is just being able to cope with that. So... Um, we ended up, um, miscarrying at home and I just remember going to work, had a lot of really bad cramping, had started bleeding at work. Um, I was 11 and a half weeks and when it finally, uh, started, I went home and I got home maybe 15 minutes I was here and I started passing the baby in the bathroom, um, or passing, I guess, matter or tissue or whatever you want to call it because I never actually saw the baby, uh, this big clump had a hardened mass, fell out, um, you know, along with some of the blood and other stuff. And I had to put it in a Ziploc bag. I took it with me to the doctor to see if they could run tests on it. They never got back with me with any results. And he told me they probably would not be able to find anything. So, you know, he would give me a call. They never called. So I just took it as, you know, they did not find anything because my, my RE is really good. 